Welcome back. I thought I'd do a comparison video between the X1T and the X-Pro radio trigger. I got the X1T sent in via Banggood, so I'm going to cover that in a bit more detail because I haven't looked at that before in a previous video. So looking at the body of this, the design is completely different to the X-Pro trigger and you do have some advantages and disadvantages. Being a later version, they have added uh, white lettering to the buttons. The original didn't have that so it was harder to see. So you just have the three buttons, the jog control, and on the side you have the two buttons, one's for power and the other's for the AF assist. Once you open up the flap you'll see that you have a micro USB port and a PC sync. And on the underside there's your cover for the hot shoe. This is a multi-interface uh, version, this is a Sony one, and power is via two AA batteries. Only control we have on the top is a test button but you have the status LED there so you can fire off test shots and it will show you that it is actually transmitting. The hot shoe on the Sony version, there is no contacts in the front there so it's just a manual flash that you can put on the top and the position of the AF assist light is slightly different as you'd expect because the body shape is completely different. I'll just mount a flash gun to this just to test so obviously you want to be in manual mode if you're going to do that and then when you press the test button it will fire. It could be a useful addition if you're going to use a flash on the camera. If you have the X-Pro you have the sync port, that's the only other way to get a flash to fire directly from the unit. So that is something which might be worth considering. If you want to check the firmware, if you push and hold the mode button whilst you're powering on it will come up with a firmware version. There is a newer version of this, this is the uh, one that's installed when I got it, but it's just a minor bug fix and you have support for 32 channels on the X1T, that's the same as the X-Pro, that's in case you get interference if you're using it with other people around. Long press on the channel and OK button drops you into the custom menus and this is one of the biggest differences between the two is the fact that you just have numbers and sometimes an indication of what it is but in most cases not. So for example you'll be able to see there with the strobe mode and you have options that you can adjust which I will put on the screen so it's going to take a while to get used to them. For example function 2 is the uh, automatic zoom or you can manually set that goes right the way up to 200 millimeters. So some of them, a few of them, you will know what they are. The others you'll have to look at the manual and you'll just get used to them over time. So it's certainly less intuitive, particularly with the custom menus or what the settings are. I think it's okay. You do have a smaller display. For example, here I'm using function six to change between three and five groups. But it's certainly no question that the X-Pro is easier. Now I've got the five groups, you can see I can move up and down those with the jog dial. There are some limitations to the groups that has to be said and then you can just press the group button to cycle through the groups and use the jog dial to change the power output. So the basic operation is still pretty simple and intuitive. So it's really when you start going into the other options and there are some combinations of buttons like long presses where you're going to have to give it a bit of time just to get into the swing of things with this but as far as the standard stuff like changing the groups and the output on those groups you can switch between manual TTL and the dashed line means that you've turned that group off that's okay that's pretty easy to get used to here you can see on TTL I'm using the exposure compensation which is in a third stop increments on the X1T Custom function 4 brings up the strobe flash so that you get an indication of that with the lightning bolts on the screen and then you'll be able to go into the main screen again and pick the time, number of times that it flashes and H is the frequency. Obviously the power output will vary depending on what you pick with that. So if you're a big user of the uh, strobe or multi flash it's definitely easier on the X-Pro. There have been some firmware updates over time so you can pick the groups and set them all the same. You can adjust the power output on those. You couldn't do that on the original. And you also have an option to reset the unit when you power it on. This is just a slow motion that I've done to show you all of the icons on the screen. So there's not as many. As far as the battery goes, that only shows up when you've got a low battery warning on this unit. Now I do have the user guide which I've put up on screen, so you might want to have a look at that. That's where you will see custom function 10 and 11 on the unit but not in the manual and that brings the AF assist function to some of the mirrorless cameras and you can also RFID change the ID of the unit just in case you're getting interference with other people using the Godox units. 
We're going to move over to the X Pro now and you can see the obvious difference here with the much larger display and you have a lot more controls on the unit which makes it much easier to use. It's certainly much more intuitive for new users but you'll be able to access the settings much quicker on the X Pro particularly when you go into the uh, menu system, the custom functions, everything is laid out on the screen so there's no doubt about what the settings are. This particular version is 1.1, there is a 1.2 which I haven't installed. I will likely do a video on updating the firmware and you can also get that big display if you want to. Another potential advantage of the X Pro is that you can use up to 16 groups. That for me isn't particularly important. Uh, three groups would generally be fine but that is something which might be of interest to some users. With version 1.1 they have added some additional functionality to the X Pro. You can now adjust in tenth of a stop increments if you want to. So if I set it to the 1 1 28th power and tenth of a stop you'll be able to see when I move the jog dial you get that very fine adjustment. Honestly for most uses the third of a stop is fine. Tenth of a stop may be of interest if you do things like macro or close-up photography where you might notice a very slight difference in power output. Another update is if you move into the AF settings, you've got DSLR and MILC. They have added the AF Assist on the X Pro for some of the mirrorless cameras on the Sony. That means the more recent ones in full frame. So that is something which is worthwhile. And Godox do tend to update these reasonably frequently. As far as changing settings and the transmission, I haven't noticed any difference at all. They both change the TT350, which I have here even at close range. There have been a lot of firmer updates for the original X1T so that has improved its close range radio ability. Just wanted to show you the AF assist. Firstly with the X Pro you've got the lines at different angles going across. I hadn't noticed much difference between these two except with the X1T it does seem to spread out in the corners which isn't particularly useful. It might just be the lens. Another difference between the two is the LCD backlight is much brighter on the X Pro and that has implications for outside, it's just a bit easier to see. As far as the range test goes, at about 100 foot, I'm not seeing any difference between these two units. They've both been reliably firing flashes, so that shouldn't be a concern. Another point to look at is the design. The X Pro does tilt up more, so if you use a mirrorless camera where you have uh, top light controls, you may find that a better option for you. So a quick summary with the X1TS, the main advantage is going to be the price and that top mounted hot shoe. There are some disadvantages, particularly with the operation, it does take more getting used to. There are some obvious advantages to the X Pro S, you have that bigger display, more control buttons, it's just easier to set the unit, particularly if you're going to be diving into the custom menu frequently. I've listed out some of the key points which I think could be improved and some of the strengths of the Godox system. But if you've got any thoughts and ideas with these radio triggers or areas that you would like to see or any comments on the performance or if you've got any questions just drop a comment below. I have done a review on the X Pro and some of the other Godox flashes so be sure to check those out and thanks very much for watching.